Hey guys, how's it going? It's Dylan again and welcome back to my channel. So first of all, thank you for joining the channel. I really appreciate your time. And today I'm gonna to be basically continuing the videos that we did on procedural generation. I want to make some changes to the previous video where we apply some of the shading and some of the ways that we did the normals. I think we need to change the way that we did it. And I wanna show you that. So we're gonna jump into Unity and do some of those changes. I also want to add some randomization to the way that we create the cubes. I'm gonna be creating random cubes with different sizes. We're gonna be learning how we apply a seed because a random function is actually not random. And we're gonna be playing with the seed and also making some changes so that we can make some random, basically some cool random shapes. So let's jump into Unity and start working on it. All right guys, so let me show you what we're gonna be doing in this lesson. And also let me give you a quick overview of what we did previously. So we have two scenes. One is the qua example and the other one is the Q example. So if I hit play on the qua example, you can see that we're generating basically procedural procedural shapes and these are all quads. And also if we go to the cube, we can also see that if I hit play, we see we should see three different three different cubes and they're all generated from basically creating vertices, creating a mesh, normals. And, and but we have some problems in here like the shading is just not right and it's really hard to tell there's no shadows and, and that's because the normals are not correct so I want to cover what we need to change in order to fix that and I also want to cover basically going to Photoshop and show you what I'm planning on doing in this video so let's go ahead and go into go into Photoshop and I think this is gonna make more sense as we as we draw it and Let's see, and I'm basically changing to, to Photoshop because I'm more comfortable with Photoshop than, than I am with the Sketchpad tool that I showed you in the first video. So, so this is what we're gonna do. We're gonna basically gonna draw a, a cube. And like I said on the previous video, this is just gonna be very, very basic. But I wanna show you why we need to do what we need to do in order for the lighting to basically to create the right shading. So. Basically, just add another line here, and then here's our last our last line. Awesome, and then I'm just gonna use the basically the pencil, and let's go ahead and group everything here, and just call this one cube. Then I'll create a new layer, and we can do this in you know in paper, like I said before, or in any other tool. This one works for me, so let's go ahead and, and try this one. So when we're trying to do normals, normals. In, in basically if you want them to look right for instance if we want let's say that we're looking at this this face right here and by a face I mean this entire area so it's basically gonna try to to draw straight lines with my touchpad and I promise I'm gonna get I'm gonna get a more uh, a different path so that I can actually draw on it okay so so basically what we're talking about is we're talking about this face right here and the normals are incorrect right now because they're all basically facing the opposite direction. And the reason why we can see the reason why we can see the shapes if I hit play is because we're using the material to determine what needs to be seen. But in reality, what you should be doing is making sure that the normals are right. And this is something that I've just been learning as well. So the normals that we want to we want to say that every vertice, every vertice that is in each one of these points that make up a square is going to be facing the appropriate direction. So think about if we rotate this entire shape and let's say that we're rotating the shape that way. And as we're rotating that shape, if you if you have the camera on the bottom or if you have the camera right here, you want to be able to see the basically the normals need to be facing that direction. So when we're talking about normals, I want the normals to be facing in that direction. So we want to do is basically change the the way that we declare the normals and then have them face the appropriate direction. So what I'm gonna be doing is I'm gonna say, okay, so for each one of these, so this one in specifically, I'm going to be facing the normals on the left direction. The same thing with this one right here. So if we say we're working on this on this face, which is the one on the right, and I will add a face, little face gizmos, like Unity calls them. And let's say that we add him and we add another vertex right here. And now we're looking at basically this face. So if we leave the if we leave the normals as they are right now, we're not gonna get any shading. The, the edges are not gonna look right. 
we're not going to get any shadows so we need to make sure that unity knows what the proper direction of the normals is for each phase so we're gonna have to make some changes it's not going to be that bad but i think it's going to make it you're going to see the changes drastically improve the look and feel of the cubes and we'll do the same thing with every one of these faces so that's going to be step one so step two what i want to do is i want to not only i want to be creating these cubes but i want to change the direction basically the the size of the cube so what we're going to be doing we're going to be changing the value of x so the value of x is going to be random the value of y is also going to be random and the value of c it's going to be random so x y and c right now the way that we set up the the mesh algorithm to create the to create the cubes is that x is actually called width y is actually called height and z we were using basically the value of x so we're going to be changing that we're going to call basically we're, we're going to still call x width and, uh, and y height but we're going to add a new name and this is going to be depth and the reason why i want to do that is because i want to change those sizes randomly so let's let's go ahead and fix the shading first and then we'll look at adding some basically procedural generation of of these cubes which is going to basically change the, the size for now we'll add more but i think we you know baby steps we got to start small and then we'll add more cool functionality to this okay so i'm going to go back into unity and thank you for your time by looking me at drawing all these all these shapes so all right so now that we're, we're here what i'm going to be doing is i'm going to create a new i don't want to change cube examples because i want to see I want you guys to understand how we are evolving from you know creating a quad and then jumping into creating a cube so i'm gonna basically du duplicate the cube example and this one is gonna be called cube and then we're gonna let's just call it random cube with proper with proper shading and we can just say example all right and that might be a long name but i think that describes it very well so I'm just going to double click it and then the other thing that I'll do because I want to also change the post processing I want to duplicate the post processing and I'm going to call this one underscore two and let's just rename the first one so that we know that I, that is for the the previous lesson so now that we have that, that rename I'm going to associate this one with underscore two all right so now we should be good we should be we should be really good as far as like what we need to do so on the scene so what i'm going to do next is i'm going to be pulling up the code and then we're going to be making some changes to the procedural shape so let's go ahead and click on assets open c sharp project and that's going to open up our our c sharp script and i'm just going to open up the the solution view here the explorer all right so there are a couple of things that we need to do so the first one is going to be making some changes to to this and let me make sure that i focus on yeah it looks like I, I made some of the changes already so i want to i'm going to undo them because i want to change i want to show you what i did so this is a good time to show you the basically the history of the source control so i'm going to go ahead and discard the changes and let's go ahead and discard that and i think that should let me make sure that everything is just do a get status here and that should be okay so it looks like we're good all right so now we should have what what i had originally from the previous lesson and we can go back here to the explorer all right so so a couple of things that what we need to do is basically fix the normals and, and right now the normals are, are really really incorrect and everything is pointing to negative vector three four which is basically in this case is going to be negative one z as you can see on the little tooltip there so and it's negative because we're multiplying by a negative number so what i'm going to do here is i'm going to create variables for each direction so we're going to say that you know this one's going to be from we're going to call it exactly what we call them in the comments so this one's going to be from and we'll just we'll just say forward and then we'll do let's just duplicate this multiple times this one is going to be back and we'll basically say back this one is going to be up then this one's going to be down so and then this one's going to be left and right and this is going to make it easier for us to type so it's going to be up and then this one's going to be down left and lastly my right one so we're basically creating variables for each direction 
So there's basically shortcuts for us. So this one's going to be front. And what I'll do is I'll just duplicate all of these ones. And then that's going to, what, what I'm saying here is the normals at 0, normals at 1, 2, and 3 are going to have the normal be directed to the front, which is going to be basically if we go back into our Photoshop, we're telling the, we're telling Unity that the normals on these vertices it's going to be pointing in a direction. All right, and we'll do the same thing with each one of these. So this one's going to be top, and we looks like we call it up. Let's go to rename it so that they so that they match. So this one's going to be top, and this one's going to be bottom, and there we go. Okay, so let's make sure that we're consistent so that when we're looking at things or referencing to things, we we don't have any any confusion. Okay, and then so that's the top, and then this one's going to be the back. So we did back here. And this is all going to be worth it as we when we look at it from in Unity. And this one is going to be bad on. And there we go. Let's just rename this one to this one as well. Now the left one is going to be the same thing. And this one as well. And lastly, our right one. And I also told you to remove the UVs, and, and that's okay for now. I think in a later video, we'll go ahead and add the UVs, and we can add a texture just to show you that we can do that as well. I was thinking even creating a, a procedural texture, but let's just keep this in, you know, keep it simple as it is for now. All right, and that looks a lot cleaner now. Now if we go back into, let's go back into Unity and show you how that is going to affect what we had. So I'm going to say play. And you can now see just by hitting play that this is changing it dramatically. We can now see that, you know, there are edges on the cubes. We can all see that we we have shadows. So if I were to move these down, you can see that the shadows were, we couldn't see them before because the normals weren't correct. You can, you can now see, excellent. So so that's great. Now let's go ahead and add another script because I want to I want to show you how that looks as we're rotating it. And this one is going to be called Rotator rotator Shape. Oh, let's call it Shape Rotator. I think that sounds better. And then let's just double click it. And this is going to be fairly simple. So this one we're just going to have a private and then Vector3. We'll just call it Speed. And we'll set this Speed to be 0. OK. And we'll just serialize it to expose it through the inspector. And then we'll remove what we don't need. Then right here, what we're going to do, we're going to say transform and then rotate. And then what we'll do is we'll grab the speed times time that delta. And then the space, we're going to say this is going to be a world space. And we can put this all in one line since it's just a one line. And I love using lambdas. All right, so that looks good. Let's go back into Unity. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to assign that to each one of the shapes. And then we'll just say shape rotator. And then we'll just say the speed. Let's go ahead and change the speed on Y. Let's change it to, say, let's try one and see how that looks. And then hit play. And I think that, I think one was just not enough. And I don't know that I want to do white anymore. Let's see how, okay, let's do it on X. So I'm just going to go back here. Change this to be 15 on all three shapes, and hit play, so we can see the rotation. There we go. That's the reason why I wanted to rotate them is because I I can see you know from every angle that the normals are correct. I probably just do something like 30, or even better, let's try 50. There we go. We're seeing shadows, and these are procedural generator, which is awesome. Now let's go ahead and change it back to 50. All right, so I think we're good there. Now let's go ahead and extend the script so that we can change this, basically the size of them as we as we toggle the the seed value. So when whenever I'm talking about procedural generation, there, you know, there are things that you can be creating procedurally, like I did here. But there's also things that we can do to procedural generate uh, the cubes. We can change the size that they have. In our case, we had width. We also have height. We also have depth which we haven't renamed yet, which we need to do. 
So let's do that. Let's go ahead and what I'm going to do here is I'm going to add a new variable. This one is just going to call it depth, and it's also going to have the value of 10. And then we're going to make some changes to, to these functions. So let me call them methods because we're using C Sharp. We're not using JavaScript or any other language. So And then the other thing that I'm going to do here, I remove them from the arguments. We don't need it. And then I'll just rename these so that it renames the ones on the bottom. So it's going to be width. And this one is going to be height. And then I'll just rename it from the arguments. We don't need it. Then what I'll do is I'll do the same thing on the generate quad function. We'll just rename it here. And we'll rename it here. Height. There we go. And then we'll just remove it from the arguments because we have one that is global on the very top. The the other thing that I want to do is I have I have depth and depth is for z. So anything that has a value on z, I'm going to put the value of depth. There we go. And I'm also going to do that here. Let's do it here. And this one as well. And this one. And before I keep going, let's make sure that I didn't break anything. It's always good to, to check your code before we keep going. And everything should look exactly the same, except we have now we have some different sizes and the reason for that is because these ones were 3 and I started at about 10 so what we can do on these ones we can just change it to 3 and oh it looks like I have different sizes for it okay let's do 10 on that one start this one on 5 and then 3 so now they should look like they they looked before there we go so so we're good everything is working fine so now let's go back into our code and, and work on, on some other things so what we need to do is we need to be able to control one thing that I want to do is be able to control the max size because I don't want people to be changing the if I'm going to add a random size I don't want them to go too high either because it's going to look really it might look bad but I want to constrain them so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to add a new float and this float is going to basically be the max random size and we're going to say that we're, we're not going to allow anything over 30 Think we can start with that and see how that looks the other thing that is cool that that i really like using is the range and that will allow us to constrain let's say that we don't want to allow somebody to generate a random shape that is a zero because we won't be able to see it so we can just say okay we want to enforce that the range is going to be from one to a number so we'll just say that this is going to go from one to 30. Well, in that case, I may want to I may want to start this at the same number that these ones are. So I'm going to start this one at 10, but I'm going to allow somebody to change the the random size to be, you know, at 30. So let's go back into Unity and see what that does to our procedural shape script. And if we go back, you can now see that I can see, you know, we have a math, a max random size, which is which is awesome. Okay, so now that we have that, what else can we do with this? So the other thing that I want to do is I want to be able to specify the seed. And the seed, whenever you're using the random function, goes like this. So let's say that you want to generate a random number and I and I do something like random and then range. Range is gonna give me a number from you know from from a, a beginning number to an ending number. So let's say that I do that, right? And and I do debug the log and you know, when the game starts, it's going to generate a random number. So let's go ahead and hit, hit play again, again to see that. And if we hit play and then go to the console, we should get a number that is randomly generated. It looks like we got three different numbers because we have three different shapes. So we got one, six, and three. So one thing that we could do is we could also control what's called the seed. So if we go into, if we say random and then seed, you can, you can see that we could set the seed right here. I can also say initiate in its state, which is which is what you need to do to initialize the seed. And then this says initialize the random number generator state with the seed. Seed is used to initialize the random number generator. And this is important because we want to be able to control the basically the number that gets feed that gets feed into the random number generator. Because if we want to go back, say we want to see the state of the random numbers if we say that the, the seed was five so we could go back and change that through a slider and, and that will make more sense as i'm as i'm showing you 
So, so what I'm going to do here is we have this random, basically this random size, and this is for the max size. We also want to do one for the for the seed. So let's go ahead and add a new one, and then this one is going to be an integer, and this one is going to be basically the random seed. And then we're going to start this random seed. We might just say, okay, we just want to start at 10. And remember, this is an integer, so we want to make sure that we, we set them as an integer. Otherwise, we're going to get a compile error. And this is also going to be a serializable fail. The other thing that I want to do, I want to also control the max number of the seed. And let's say that I want to start also at 1. But maybe this one we go higher. We go up to 100. And that's going to be 100 different changes on the random generator. So it, might, it will create 100 different numbers. And, and not only that, but also variations. So I'll show you that as I'm, as I'm going through the code. I'm, I don't think I'm explaining it very well, but as I show you the code, I think it'll make a lot of sense. The, the other thing that I need to add, I want to add, I want to track what the previous value was of the seed. And this is so that if somebody changes it, I want to apply changes to the, the sizes. So I'm gonna start this one at 10 as well. And this one is not gonna be exposed. This one is gonna be one that we use internally. So I'm just going to say a previous random seed. All right, so that should be the the other thing that I want to do is I think it'll make more sense if I move this down because I want to add a section in here for the random. So this is going to be random generation implementation. I like to add regions so that I can keep track of the changes and, and it also makes it easier for you to know, okay, this is the section that applies to random generation. All right, so now we have, so we have a couple of things in here. We have the random seed, the previous random seed, and also the random, the random size, the max random size. All right, so I think, I think we're good there. So then the other thing that I want to do is I want to set the, the seed at the beginning of the star. So what I'm going to say is I'm going to say random initiate a state and then we're going to pass in the random seed okay so that should take care of that piece the the other thing that i want to do is i also want to so right now what's going to happen is on the update method this is going to basically call the generate cube and then we're going to be changing we're basically going to be changing the size of this as we move so i also want to i also want to change the size dynamically on star so before I before I do that, I want to create a new method. Let's create a new one, and this one's gonna say generate random sizes. And we can just say excellent. And then the other thing that I want to do is I don't want to do this unless we're we're basically using the random generator. I want to make it optional because not everybody will want to use it. So we can add another variable here, and we can say private bool, and then we can say should generate or we can say generate, should generate random sizes. We'll just set it to false by default. If somebody wants to use that functionality, they can basically set it to true. All right. And then what we'll do here is we'll make this one optional. So we'll say, if that is set to true, then we'll do what we're going to be doing. All right. So, so far, so good. And the thing that we need to do here is we need to generate random sizes. And remember that we have width, height, and depth. So this is why I broke this into multiple ones. So I'm going to say, OK, the width, I'm going to use the random. And then I'm going to use the range. And then we want to make sure that we stay within the boundaries. And the boundaries are going to be 1 and, let's see, the 1 and 30. So I know for sure that we're going to, you know, we're going to say, is going to be 1.0 f and then the max we're going to go to the max size so that should control basically the the minimum and the maximum all right so that looks good let's do the same thing with the uh, height let's also do the same thing with the depth so so far so good and, and this is pretty straightforward we're basically just generating the sizes for the width the height and the depth so so far, this is great, but it's going to be a problem when this is running because this generate cube is basically going to execute and, and we, know, we might not want to generate random sizes and then do this every time. So let me, let me show you what I, mean, what I mean by that. 
I only want to do the generate random sizes on demand. And, and to do that, we're going to have to make some changes. So I'm just going to say, I'm going to add an in here. And the should generate random sizes is going to have a, it's basically going to have a not. So if we're not regenerating random sizes and it's a cube, then we're going to do basically do that on every frame. And and then the same thing with the quad. I think we're I think we're good there. And let me go ahead and add curly braces so that we can, if we add more code, we don't we don't have errors. So let me go ahead and do that there. And that will help me get my thread my my thought my thoughts correct. And okay, so it looks like we're good. We have our mesh here, we have our initialization. So so let's go ahead and implement the, the other piece. So at some point we need to call the ge the generate random sizes and I only want to call that when I'm doing basically a change a change to the random seed. So remember that we added a previous random seed. That's what we're going to be checking for. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to say if previous random seed does not equal to the random seed then if that is true that's when I'm going to be calling that's when I'm going to be calling the generate random sizes, which is going to give us, which is going to give us a random size, and I'm also going to generate the cube. But in this case is going to generate a random, basically a random number, a random cube uh, with different sizes. All right. So, but at some point, so what we're saying right now, if they're not equal, so right now they are equal, right? So as soon as we as soon as we do that, it's going to generate these, but we want to make sure that they're equal so these doesn't keep executing. So I'm going to say, OK, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to generate, I'm going to change the site, the, the random seed or the previous random seed to the new random seed. So if everything works, this should be, this should be good. The other thing that we could do to make this more readable, we could just say, instead of doing that there, we can say in, and then we can remove it from here. I think that will make more sense. And we can change it there, just fix the indentation okay so I think we're good I think we got everything everything we need we're applying random materials we are initializing the the C stay and I think I think everything I think everything is great and all right all right let's go ahead and let's go ahead and go to unity and let's see what we have going on here and see if everything works so right now nothing is going to happen because remember we added that new variable and that variable it's going to say that these are not random so if i hit play we shouldn't see any difference everything should be working now let's say that i hit should generate random and we also change the random seed so you can see that by doing that we're now generating random sizes and we can always go but the maximum number of the random site you can kind of see that 9, 8, and 2. We have it set to 10, so let's say that we make it smaller. Now the, the random sizes are going to be a lot smaller. Let's say that I go very large. So now we can see that we're generating really cool, really cool effects. So the other thing that will be cool to add and will be, let me go, go back here and let's make some changes to this. I'm going to say should generate random to all of them the let's see the random seed on all of them let's go ahead and make them different because i think it'll be cool if some of them will be maybe 20. let's say this one is going to be 18 on the max this one is going to be maybe i don't know seven and then this one we might make it three and we just select a different random seed awesome and there we go something like that so I think that's cool, but I think it'll be cooler if we have different materials apply as well. So right now the materials are only apply when the game starts. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna move that and I'm gonna also execute it here. So what we're gonna be doing is we're basically generating random sizes, then we'll be generating a cube, and then lastly, we're applying a random material. Okay, so I think, I think we're good there. Let's go back into Unity. And I'm going to hit play and see what happens now. So things are generated randomly. Looks like we, we have different colors. All right, so now what I'm going to do, let's go back in here. And I think I need to make the random seed the same on all of them. Otherwise, we're not going to be able to control them all. 
there we go so now we're getting some really cool effects and we can in fact just do I don't know something like that and you can kind of see that how everything is changing and everything is random so we could also duplicate these and you can see that as I'm duplicating them we'll just just move them around and we can do something like something like that there we go alright let's go ahead and select them all and see what happens so now if I do let's go ahead and focus on this view because I want to see so you can kind of see how we're getting let me change let me make sure that I'm changing all of them that one let's see and I move them around so that's that one there I can move that one there I can move so they're not close to each other and we could also modify the script to space them if we wanted to I think I think that's just too much I think if we do something like that manually there we go and I think a couple of more so they're not overlapping and let's see we just move those ones down and one more maybe maybe we even move it back alright so now let's go ahead and select them all and see what happens if I change you can kind of see how we're getting some some changes some really cool changes so what if I wanted to change the max size to all of them and now we now we're getting generating some really cool so you can see how we can you know just with a few changes we can get some really interesting changes in unity and let me go ahead and fix the camera because it's bugging me that I can't see them all and we can probably get closer looks like there's some cooling going on in here because if I get far I can I can't really see let's see there we go I think something like that and let's go back in here and let's go ahead and change change them rapidly so we can see the other thing we can do we can change the size and there we go so we got some changes so I'm really happy with what we did in this lesson, guys. If you guys have any questions, please let me know. All right, guys, thank you very much for watching this video. I really appreciate your time, and I hope you had a really good time as much as I did. Also, be sure to check out GameDev.net because they have amazing tutorials and also great forums with a great community. And don't forget to check me out in Patreon where I'm basically posting information about what I'm doing behind the scenes. Also, the source code that I'm doing during the videos, those are also posted in Patreon. So again, thank you very much, guys.